we will now take up the second type of dialysis that is peritoneal dialysis. The peritoneal dialysis which is being performed these days most commonly is known as continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. The abbreviation used is CAPD. So, this is the most common type. Again, the pr principle is same diffusion. But here, the membrane which is going to help in this diffusion process or as a semi-permeable membrane is the peritoneal membrane of the abdominal cavity. Peritoneal membrane of abdominal cavity. Abdominal cavity is lined on the inner side by a serous membrane and that serous membrane is known as the peritoneal membrane. So it is a serous membrane which lines the inner lining of abdominal cavity or serum. So if this is the skin then the muscles and this is the innermost lining that is the peritoneal membrane and this cavity inside is the body cavity, abdominal cavity or coelom. So this space which we have here is body cavity and in this there would be organs and all. So now what is done in this uh, procedure is surgically a catheter is implanted into the abdominal cavity. So there would be surgically a catheter implanted. So this structure is actually a catheter. It is a small tube which is implanted surgically. You cannot remove it unless and until uh, the doctors help you too. So this is implanted. This catheter is basically connected to a small pump. So this is the pump and here there is a small knob. So this knob is there. So this is a small device which is implanted or sort of surgically attached to your body and you, you can cover it with the clothes. So it is not visible from outside. It's a small structure which is seen from outside. Whenever the person needs dialysis, again everything is uh, planned by the doctors and they tell the patient that this is the time this procedure has to be done. So what is done is dialysate. They are available in the market in the form of packets. Such dialysate containing packet is attached to this. So this is the packet which has this liquid. Now with the help of this pump, the dialysate is infused into the abdominal cavity. So when the pump is turned on, the liquid is going to come into the body body cavity. Now this liquid, its composition is again prescribed by the doctor so you know which type of dialysate the person needs. So you just go there and you buy that one which the doctor has prescribed because that concentration would again be decided by the condition of the patient. So now this liquid has been infused into the body cavity. This membrane is acting as a semi-permeable membrane. Here are the blood vessels which are flowing through this uh, area, the muscles and all these tissues. And from here, urea, uric acid and those substances would diffuse into this liquid. So this peritoneal membrane is acting as a semi-permeable membrane. The principle is same diffusion because the blood, so here suppose this is the blood vessel that we have drawn. This is blood vessel and in the blood vessel here, the blood has more urea, more creatinine, more hippuric acid and the dialysate, which this is the dialysate, which was infused is without urea, creatinine or hippuric acid. So from higher concentration, urea, creatinine and all these things will come into dialysate. 
this abdominal cavity must be emptied every four to six hours. So now how is it empty? It is the same pump which is going to work in the reverse direction. So it is going to suck this liquid into this bag. So now when this liquid comes out, it is going to bring all that urea, uric acid which has diffused from the blood into this liquid. Here there is a limitation because we are not continuously removing this liquid as we did in case of hemodialysis there would be 50-50 uh, movement of urea. So, suppose here the concentration of urea is 100, here in dialysate 0. A situation would come where there is 50% in blood and 50% has gone into dialysate. So, this liquid has to be removed and fresh dialysate has to be infused. So, it has to be emptied every 4 to 6 hours. So, a person can do this on his or her own without any assistance because this kind of bags these are available you can connect it to that pump turn that pump on the liquid is going to get into the body cavity then the person can move around do his or her daily work and after five six hours then the liquid has to be taken out in the same bag and the bag can be discarded Again, new dialysate has to be infused and that is why it is termed as a continuous process. It has to go on. But here, there is no hospitalization required. A patient can perform this procedure on his or her own and the daily routine would not get affected. But there is a risk because you are doing it on your own. Whether you are able to sterilize things properly or not, if not, then there are chances of infection. So, both the systems, they have their pluses, advantages and disadvantages. Like hemodialysis is an expensive process, requires hospitalization, but the risk of having infection is very, very less. As compared to this one, here you don't depend on anybody, you don't have to get hospitalization done. And... These things are available in the market. So you just purchase as per the doctor has prescribed, perform the procedure on your own. But the risk is that there is a chance of infection because you are dealing with everything. And if the things are not properly clean, then the infection straight away gets into your body. So both the procedure, and it is not that effective also as it is hemodialysis. In hemodialysis, complete toxic waste can be removed. Here, it has to go on and on and on because as we said, the principle is diffusion and after equilibrium is, atta is attained, movement of that substance will stop. Again, new uh, fluid. So it is not that effective as compared to hemodialysis. So if we compare these two procedures, that is hemodialysis and this one, that is Continuous Ambulatory Peritoneal Dialysis, that is CAPD, C-A-P-D. So if we compare these two and let us talk about the pluses of both first or let us compare them in general. First point, this is very effective. This is less effective. And here we are talking in terms of removal of the waste. Second comparison, cost wise. This is expensive, this is less expensive, then if it comes to hospitalization, here hospitalization is a must, hospitalization is must, here not required. Fourth, chances of infection, here least chance of infection whereas in this case chances of infection are more so we can compare these two but depending upon the daily routine and how much time a person can devote for this hemodialysis or not they go for these kind of options but it is normally the doctor who takes the decision depending upon the patient's condition so this is hemodialysis 
and peritoneal dialysis principle is diffusion and we have also seen a comparative thing between the two procedures.